Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody is well. Hope everyone's doing good. We're here live from my office. Technical difficulties here. It's okay. It's okay. Part of the uh, experience, I guess. Part of dealing with the challenges just to make everything go. Okay, hope everybody had a, is having an incredible day, an incredible year. Happy New Year for those that are that have celebrated Rosh Hashanah yesterday. Thanks so much for tuning. Thanks so much for being on. Whew, what a morning. Thank God. So we, last time, we were just finishing up this concept of knowing what's in your circle, of knowing one of the things that we're working on, knowing not only what is part of our circle from a level of mastery, but looking at it from a level of connecting to other people, looking at it from a level of understanding what we can control and we can't control. What I really want to move into right now is an area that is really what is at the core of it. And as we delve deeper into the world of control, what ends up happening is we start to understand that when we miss understanding what it is and what it isn't that I can control, we ultimately sacrifice something along the way. And the sacrifice that we have is the feelings that we need in order to drive and get the energy to accomplish the things that we need to accomplish. So let's for a second sort of break this down. In order for us to accomplish anything in life, in order for us to achieve that which we want to achieve, we have to have the energy for it. We have to have the ability to get the strength to be able to go out and do the things we have to do. One of the saddest things is when you see people, sometimes it's kids, but that's, when it's kids, it's not as sad. It's much sadder when it's adults. When you see people and they don't, and they have so much talent, so much capacity, so much ability, but they don't have the energy. Not that they don't have the natural energy. They don't have the internal energy. They, they can do it, but there's something on the inside that's not alive. There's something on the inside that's exhausted. And that exhaustion prevents them, if you will, from being able to dig into their natural abilities and perform. So the difference between you know, two workers that come to work with enthusiasm or a lack of enthusiasm, what that is, if you really break it down, is they both may have the exact same talents, but in one case, the person can't access his talents because he is overwhelmed. He is exhausted. He is uninterested. And these feelings are preventing him or her from accessing his abilities. So whereas one person may walk in with maybe a little bit less in terms of natural abilities, but because they have an empowerment, because they have the energy, because they have the attitude, they go out there and they get stuff done in ways that are beyond themselves. Whereas the second person walks in and has more abilities. Emotionally, he's not interested. And so there's this disconnect, which we all see in people that we know. Everyone knows one person whose life could be so much greater if they would just be more enthusiastic be more positive, not assume the worst every single time, not give in so quickly. When, they are when they're facing a challenge, not let the challenge overwhelm them before they even take a shot at facing it. If you really get underneath it, 
what ends up happening is a lot of the people that accomplish things and that live greater lives, they don't have greater genes. They have a greater, it's not, I don't wanna belittle it and say they have a greater attitude. It's true, but it's deeper. It's that there's some people that are empowered. They generate power. They live in power. They have this locomotive that they go to that allows them to keep on chugging positively. And that energy that they put out into the world is the energy that ultimately creates the difference between them succeeding and them failing. So what's happening in our little journey that we're taking together is that the journey begins with the world of knowledge. What we've been doing this past few weeks is trying to use our minds to cut the world up in certain pieces that allows us to decide and to know what I have to do. Our mind and our eyes are indiscriminate and they're gonna go everywhere. And it's going to be, it's gonna take in the entire world and by doing that, we're going to have so much to do that we're gonna do nothing. And what the first thing we've been doing these past few weeks is trying to constantly use our minds for what it is, which is a sword, which is a sword to, to chop up the world, a sword to clear out the, the weeds, to create a path to allow us to lay down roads that we know exactly what to do every day when I get up and I have my level of discipline that I've been given. And in that level of discipline, I know how to use it. I know how to get up in the morning and to go in a direction and to be accomplished because I am not allowing the world to give me stuff to do. I am using my mind to parse through my day and to parse through my year and to allow myself to to know what it is that I should be using my efforts and energy for. I have only a certain amount of time and only a certain amount of discipline and only a certain amount of talent. If I take that time and talent and discipline and then use it indiscriminately, I'll just be mediocre all the time. And I'll just get used to being mediocre because that's what I do when I do everything always and I have no the ability to control the border of my head. And then I'll, su I'll, subject, I'll, 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 I'll deal with it by trying to hear someone else's life who've achieved, who has achieved some level of greatness and I'll live vicariously through that. But, but when we use our minds to understand what it is that I gotta do every day, what is it in my circle of mastery? What are my values that I put? And, how, and what am I doing every day that isn't in line with what I wanna value of mine? Why am I doing these for? What can I control? What can I control? And I'm using my mind constantly to ask these questions, to make calculations. Even if I'm wrong in my calculations, half the time, it's, it's fine because at least I'm making calculations. At least I'm thinking. At least at the end of something, I can sit back and go, was that the right use of my time? Did I spend this much time on a value that I don't really have? Am I missing these things that I should be doing more of? When you use our minds to tell us what to do, what we're doing is saying, I have a finite amount of things. What do I put them to? But that's the first step. As we go into the journey, what we then discover is that I don't even know the extent of what I have. Because that which I have, if it is being encircled with energy, it is greater. It expands. It gets bigger. So a little bit of talent, an enormous amount of energy, goes further than that talent deserves. The energy that I put into something is a value itself. 
And so even if I am not the greatest X, when I approach something with a certain level of energy and enthusiasm, that, that energy and enthusiasm is going to shift the limited resources that I have. So in the first exercise that we've been working on, which is how do we put our minds to something, we have to be careful with our resources. We have to be conservative in how we spend things. Now we start to turn to ourselves and say, wait a second, I could have an enormous amount more than I think. I could have, if I, it's the energy that's holding me back. It's not just the thought that's holding me back. Proper thinking and, and knowing where to put my time, that's, that's one thing that I have to work on. But wait a second, wait a second. I don't even know what I have. I don't even know who I am because whatever I have, depending on the energy that I put to that thing will depend on the ability for me to do that thing. Can I wake up in the morning? I don't know. I don't know, because if I get up with energy, maybe I can. And if I get up without energy, then maybe I can't. Can I take on that new project? I don't know. If I do it with energy, maybe that whatever talents that I have will expand the project. And I will find a piece of myself that I never had before. Maybe what's holding me back in life is not just the lack of clarity. It's the lack of energy. It's that I'm waiting for the world to give me energy. And meanwhile, the world is waiting for me to give it energy. I'm waiting for the world to inspire me. And the world is waiting for me to inspire it. There is a resource of energy that I have inside me. And that resource continues, continues to burn inside me. And I have to figure out on my own how to bring it out. And why is it so critical for me? Because one of the greatest blocks to energy is a lack of clarity, which is what we started to get at last time. When I am everywhere, I am nowhere. When I'm nowhere, I feel like I'm out of control. And when I'm out of control, I feel like I've lost, I lose my energy. As I start to focus myself, as I start to stay where I am, as I start to look at my day and live where I'm, I'm in, to see the things that I have, to understand what I can control versus what I can't control. When I start to create clarity, and start to see the things that I am responsible for, now it allows me to have the freedom to start to dig into myself. When I've, if you will, controlled my borders, now I can start to build my country. When I have no borders up, I can't build anything. I'm too busy running to build. I'm too busy you know, multitasking to think. I can't even think about my day. I got too much going on. And in my free moment, when my brain can start to think about my day, I'm already being overwhelmed by someone else's message. As soon as I lay down the border and I start to ask what I should and shouldn't do, and I start to think about my day and my year, from a place of what's in my circle, how does it connect and what can I control? As I start to pull things away and I start to shut the border down from intruders, now I have the breath to start to build my city. And the way I build my city is I start to dig into my city, right? Israel was a barren land 70 years ago. If you notice something amazing, you don't see this anymore because it's a different country now. But back then, for those who are 55 and older, you know that when you sit here in Israel, one of the first things that pops into your head is trees. For those who had that JNF little pushka that your grandparents maybe had, if you remember those days, you were given money to plant trees because Israel understood we're taking back our country. I have to rebuild it. I have to replant it. Our job is to dig into the soil and bring life out again. 
Our job is to make, to go deeper, to dig into our resources. They didn't, they didn't have the ability to control their border. They were fighting wars every 10 years and they're always fighting wars. But the idea that once I have a moment to breathe, I can now, I can now dig. That concept, once we have a moment where we stop the world rushing in and us, what we have to now do is dig. What we're digging for is energy. What we're digging for is the ability to come at my day with enthusiasm, with positivity. Because the difference between the ability to use my resources it's not going to be resources that I have. It's going to be resources that I can now lighten up. My talents, my mind, my body, these are things that it needs life. When I approach my day with a certain level of depth, a certain level of positivity, with a certain level of energy, then I am approaching my day using my resources to the fullest extent. And if I don't, then I have things that I'm just loud, it's, it's lying fallow. You know, if you look at, let's take Israel for example, you look at that country now and it's blooming. If you were there, if you'd be there 150 years ago, it would all be a desert. You'd be like, what a fallow land produces nothing. If you, went, if you were in Israel 150 years ago, you would go through the whole country. You'd see rocks and sand. Now, blooming. Orchards and farms. Blooming. What's the difference? Obviously God, but what's the difference? It's the digging. It's the believing that even in the desert, you can figure out a way to make it grow. When you plant, something's alive. Trees are alive. We, for us to bloom, need to be alive. It doesn't mean that our bodies need to be working. It means that we have to infuse our lives with a certain level of enthusiasm, of energy. We have to bring energy to the day. We bring energy to the world. Understanding how to do that allows us to take what we have to the next level. Okay, everybody, have an amazing day. I hope by tomorrow we can get some of these tech difficulties fixed. But until then, have an awesome day. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. With God's help, I can't wait to see you in the morning. Have a great day.